All right, so to kick things off, no pun intended, I am using a application template I called Rails Kickoff Tailwind, uh, which is based around Chris Oliver's Jumpstart template. Definitely check out this repo. This is what I'm gonna reference to actually boot up my app and get it all set up just to save a ton of time. If you haven't seen what this actually does, it's it's more or less a, a application that installs Tailwind CSS and another bundle of goodies that we'll use uh, including Devise and Foreman, uh, and of course, Webpacker that is dependent on Tailwind CSS, which is dependent on Webpacker, I mean. So to actually boot that, you'll need to clone this repo down. Um, and it's more or less just a time saver. Feel free to do this on your own from scratch. It's not gonna wreck your day. If you have to, it's just gonna take some more time to set up. So what I'll do is a git clone of that app. Actually, I think I might have it here. Let's see. Kick off Tailwind. Yeah, let's see the end of that. Kick off. I'm going to make sure I have the latest. I did do some changes to the views just to update a few things. Okay, so in this, we're going to run our new app. Um, and inside this are the files you see in this repo. Um, you could use it and pass a full path to this folder to run this template we need to run, but it's not necessary in my case. I'll just move it outside of the folder. So I will actually run a Rails new. And in fact, I'll close this to get consult Lee is what I called it. It's probably an awful name. Uh, but then we'll pass in a template by passing dash or hyphen M and template which is the file right there. So this will scaffold our app based on the configuration I, I've led before. Uh, it'll ask us what to name the app, which I've been, I'll go ahead and say consultly. It does all these things under the hood uh, that's pre-configured. So it just, again, saves time, saves me time because I do all these screencasts and I don't have a ton of time uh, based on all the work I do everywhere else. So. Bear with me. Uh, like I said, there's another video on this particular kickoff template. Definitely check that out. Maybe I'll link to it um, using the card in the video or something, if that helps. But feel free to use this to your own liking. Uh, I've been using Tailwind a lot lately, and I really love it. It's very uh, scalable CSS in terms of writing stuff I don't have to reach for custom styles for. So uh, we'll use that. There we go. So it's already initialized and everything with Git. So I'll just CD, I'll just open this folder and grab Consultly out of it. I have another sites folder I've been messing around with stuff on. Uh, so then we'll CD out of this. If I can type, we're in our sites directory and then I'll CD into that Consultly directory. Cool. So here's our fresh app. Uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure we have Foreman ready. Uh, if you don't have Foreman on your machine, you can install it with um, gem install Foreman. Mine should be installed. Yeah, uh, if not, yours will install. And from there, you can do Foreman start. And it should boot up. So you see we're running Webpack, uh, Sidekick, and our Web Rails server all at once, like I said in the last video. And it's doing, uh, for Webpack, it's compiling all of our assets and everything. You can see all the data and analytics behind that here, which is kind of nice. Cool. So in another tab, I'll leave that running. Um, we'll go to our sites directory, and I have aliases to it, so you might have to set those up if you don't. And then we'll CD in the consultly. And then we could do a sublime open. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in another window I'm famously known for, I think. And then we have our demo app in this one, just in case I need to copy some assets and stuff over. Let's clean this up. All right, so here's our main app. And what I wanna do first is install a few gems.
I think that's set. We can go ahead and run bundle, which you would need to do anyway. And I should note before this, when this app kicked off, it added a few fields in our users table. Uh, one called the admin, which you'll need if you aren't running this automatically um, using the template. I'm going to use that later on as we get the app built to have an admin side of this so we could display users and their roles um, and edit them basically or delete them. Uh, I didn't, I failed to show that in the first video, but it's not a big, it's just basically a listing of the users that are on the app itself. Uh, so that's something to remember. The rest here is pretty standard from device in the database. And then I've, I'm not going to utilize this, but friendly ID slugs is, is able up and able and ready to roll if we want to. So instead of the meeting ID that displays in the URL, we could actually have it be maybe the title of the meeting, but that's just an enhancement later on, uh, mainly for SEO. It's a real big enhancement. Okay. So we created device here. Um, before this is a pro tip. If before you run device, if you do, not uh, modify the, the database in the beginning and running my app thing, you can actually uncomment these lines to enable these things. Uh, you can't now, you'd have to go back and, and add these manually in a new migration at this point, but it's just something to think about before just scaffolding it like I did in my uh, app kickoff. So aside from that, let's run bundle. Most, most tutorials will tell you to run bundle install. Bundle is the same thing. Um, it's just kind of an insider secret there. It's probably not a big secret by any means. I should also note that this app is up to, uh, to Ruby 2.5.3, which I think is current in Rails 5.2.1, uh, which I think most of my other stuff has been at least a, a version behind on both of those. So keep that in mind as you're going forward, you might run into an error where you don't have the latest version of Ruby or Rails to run this on your local environment. So you can update your Ruby version with our BNV uh, and Rails. So the, all those things would have to be updated and it's pretty simple to do. Um, I'll probably have to do that in a different video or just look at my early videos on how to do those things. Uh, it should be of use. Uh, also for the database, we're going to use just, just SQLite for now. Um, I don't, I could plug it into Postgres or MySQL, but I don't think I need to for this future stuff. I'd, I'd like to get into that because it is more scalable and easier to use on apps that are live. Okay. So I think that's the gist of the gems. The next step is to scaffold our first model. This is going to be a meeting model. So our first model is going to look like rails generate meeting singular, make sure it's singular. Uh, we'll do a typical name, which by default, if you don't pass anything here like that, it's a string by default. So you could just put the actual name and then start date will be a date time type end time or excuse me, it should be start time, end time is date time. And then we're going to reference the user here. So this is going to give us a user ID on the meetings table by default, and then also add an index, which is helpful for just query querying for the user faster if we end up using it. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that user references. I think I spelled that right. Yeah. So we'll run this migration and I did that wrong. So let me show you what I did. So I, I just wrote rails G and it should be model right before that. And or it should be scaffold right before that. So the scaffold is going to tell it to just basically create every bell and whistle for this model, uh, for our app. So go ahead and run that. There we go. So a ton of stuff made, but we'll make use of most of this. So that's a good thing. Uh, we have a migration that creates the meetings. We have a controller, our routes get in 
input to our route. We have our views for most of the CRUD operations. So index, edit, show, new, form, uh, not form, but new, and test stuff and JSON builder stuff if we want to use that, which we haven't gotten into any of that yet. Uh, and then of course assets. By default, Rails prefers coffee uh, in instead of JS. If you just modify that to .js, it will do everything you want it to do. Uh, I do want to delete this scaffold CSS file because it's annoying. Um, you can turn that off. I won't worry about that now, but that's just something to remember. Make sure I'm on the right project. And before I forget, there is a gem here. I forgot to uncomment. It's Redis. We're going to need that to run um, Sidekick in the background and send our emails later. So just go and uncomment that and do another bundle install real quick. Cool. So now each should have Redis in your project right here. All right. And then I'll go back to our app assets style sheets scaffolds and just delete that delete don't save uh, I should show you my routes right now I'm have it uh, my template kicks off with a base home controller so in our app controllers we already have a home controller by default with an index action that just gives uh, device a place to display its notices, which it requires when you uh, run device install. So on the routes themselves, uh, I have that already set up for device and the root is already to home index by default. So I'm gonna delete this comment, clean it up. And we do have uh, Sidekick as well. So. Uh, so we can already boot the app and see instead of the rails welcome screen we see our own stuff so we can just do it's already booted in fact so over here it's going to tell me to run a migration real quick but I'll, I'll pull up the browser just to show you by example so right here I have localhost 5000 Okay, migrations are pending to solve run app, so we can do that. So Rails TV migrate. Cool. So we created meetings which we just scaffolded, and then we can come back refresh, and we should see our base default kick off tailwind template. I can't speak, uh, but I have just some basic boilerplate code here, uh, but. It's, device is all hooked up and ready to roll and this is using Tailwind as you can see it's a much nicer experience than the default rail stuff so part of the reason I used it is just cleaning up the UI since I'm kind of a designer first so I think with that I'll end this video and start on to the next we'll start um, getting the message or meetings um, all set up and tweaked to be uh, functioning and save a, a current user to the meeting itself. But you can see we already have our form, the start time, end time, the user, which we'll get rid of probably. And then you can create a meeting going that route. So let's go and start that next. We'll add in some authentication with device and just start making things look a lot nicer.